Okay, uh, welcome back. I know it's been a hot minute since uh, I made one of these videos, but here's where we left off. We have this system that allows us to f detect matches, new pieces come in, um, the pieces will collapse if there's a match made underneath them. So it's the very, very basics of a match three game, but there's a lot more that we can add to this. So in the future, in the coming I don't know, a week or two, we're going to talk about how to make uh, bombs when you have a match of four, um, column bombs and row bombs, depending on which direction you use to match it. We're going to talk about how to make uh, color bombs and adjacent bombs when you make a T or an L. Uh, we're also going to talk about blank spaces and the kind of jelly tiles that are similar to Candy Crush. So we're going to be implementing a lot more systems in this as we go on. Um, today, though, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that our pieces will fall in instead of just appearing like they do right now. So right now, if I make a match, these will collapse. New pieces just straight up appear. We're going to make them fall in. All right, so let's dive right in. So if we take a look at... Let me make this bigger so I can see everything. Um, if we take a look at our... The first object I want to look at is the dot. Right now my pieces are moving pretty slowly, and I also have some magic numbers here that I want to fix. So let's open up the step event in the dot object. So if we're looking at the step event right now, um, if you don't know, a magic number in programming is a number that's thrown into the code with no explanation of what it is, how the programmer came to it, what it does, anything like that. You could argue that this 88 and this 216 are magic numbers. Uh, ideally, I should have some object that is like my variable container. And rather than doing plus 88, I would do plus whatever the variable this refers to in the container is. We'll, we'll clean this up as we go, but we're not going to clean up that part. Right now, the, uh, the two, or actually I guess four magic numbers I want to clean up first are going to be this um, distance from the point, and the lerp factor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my create event and I'm going to add some new variables here that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to put these with the position variables. So I'm going to actually should go with the movement variables. So I'm going to go down here to my movement variables and I'm going to make a variable that I'm going to call smoothing which is going to refer to how quickly a piece moves towards where it should be. And I'm going to set this to be 0.6. I'm going to create a, another variable that I'm going to call, um, we'll call it uh, target, um, actually, we're not, let's call it tolerance. I'm going to set that equal to 2. The tolerance is how many pixels uh, the dot can be away from its target position before it just snaps to where it should be. So smoothing and tolerance. If I go back to my step event now, in here, um, rather than having this just be 2, this number that I just randomly picked, I'm going to have this be tolerance. Same thing with this one down here. And rather than having this be 0.2, I'm going to make this be smoothing. I have a tendency to be sloppy when I code, and this is me being sloppy. So bear with me. This image alpha equal to 0.2, we're going to replace that with something else later, so don't worry about that right now. Um, all right, cool. So now, to get them to slide in, let's take a look at our room here. So I'm going to open up room 1, which is the room that we're using. And right now, this room has a few specific features that I want to discuss and how we can change these to make them better fit what we're going to try to do. So... Our main room here has a width of 360 and a height of 640. Um, to make things slide in, they need to still be part of the room, but I'm going to want them to be up high and then move to where they should be. So the main idea is rather than spawning it directly where it should be, we're going to spawn it a certain offset above. And then as soon as it spawns, since it knows where it should be, it's going to move to that place where it should be um, because it's spawning above. So I want to double the height of my room. Instead of having my height be 640, I'm going to make my height be 1280. And if I hit play now, I'm going to get this super weird looking room. 
Um, I'll just want to show you really quickly. Okay, sorry about that weird cut there. So if we hit play with the room and the viewport, or with the room set up as we have it right now, and this is what we see, which is pretty ridiculous. I mean, we can still uh, we can still end up working with it, but it's not quite what we want. So we're gonna change this. So let's go back into Game Maker Studio here, and let's go back into the room. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave the room settings as it is. Uh, the width is 360, the height is 1280, but I'm gonna go to Viewports and Cameras, and I'm gonna click Enable Viewports. I'm gonna choose Viewport Zero. I'm gonna make that visible. I'm gonna make this have a width of, let's just stick to 360 by 640. And then rather than having its Y position be zero, I'm gonna make its Y position be 640. And now, uh, where's our room? Here it is. You can see that we have all this extra space up on top, but what we're gonna see is just what's outlined in this white box. And so that's what the viewport does. Um, if you're creating a top-down game or something that needs to follow a character, you can even have um, who this is going to follow, object following. Um, oh yeah, and the other thing here, so there's the camera properties, which is the size of the camera in the room, and then there's the viewport properties. The viewport properties is how big is this going to be uh, created on the screen. And rather than having the width be 1024, I'm just going to leave it at 360 by 640, but you can change this to be whatever you want. In fact, um, so long as you're keeping with the same aspect ratio of a display in code, you can change your viewport to have um, a width and height that matches exactly the display. Um, and if your, if your room, if what you were building your camera is in the correct aspect ratio as your display, you won't see any distortion. If your camera is a slightly different aspect ratio, you'll see a little bit of distortion, but not a big deal. All right, so I'm going to save this and I'll hit play now. And there's an issue, if you'll see as soon as this comes up. Da, da, da. Okay, so now our viewport, or not our viewport, our window is the right size. We don't see any of our dots. And the reason we don't see any of our dots is because our dots are in the room, but they're up above where we can't see them. So again, what we want to do is go in here. Uh, let's go to our workspace and let's go to our objects and game manager And what I'm going to play with this now is I'm going to play with what the Y start is so I increase the room uh, I made it 640 taller, so I'm going to change Y start from 216 To whatever 216 plus 640 is in my case um, That's 856 And that changes it there I need to also change it in the dot object though. Um, my create code, this is still 216, this needs to be 856 here when I'm deciding what the row is. And then in the step event, my target Y is based on 216 being the Y start as well. This should be 856. Now, here's one thing really quickly. Since I have my Y start built here already, I can just have this instead of being plus 856 because if I make any more changes, I'm gonna have to remember to come back and change these. And if I don't change all of them, it's gonna be weird. I can just have this be O underscore game manager dot Y start. So it's a reference to the game manager's Y start. And now when I change it in the game manager, I'll change it everywhere else. And I'll do the same thing here, O underscore Game manager dot x start. This is what I was talking about with those magic numbers. Since I was using a magic number here, if I make a change here, I have to remember every other place that I did that, and I have to make the same change. So uh, this is going to be y minus o underscore game manager dot y start, and then this is going to be o underscore game manager dot x start and then 
I believe there's one more place I need to change that. And I think it's in refilling the board. Nope, because I'm using X start and Y start there. So this might be okay. Let's see. I also could be making a mistake. We'll find out together. Um, okay, so I'm going to let that build here. Okay, cool. So our board generated with a match, which isn't quite what we wanted, um, but the board is where we want it to be. Now to make it slide in, instead of creating it at that um, at that start position, we're going to create it above. And so um, when we go into the game manager events, um, I'm going to go to my create event, and I'm going to create um, an offset here. So I'm going to call this Y offset. And I'm going to have that be equal to 640, the height of the room. So when I'm creating my, um, my pieces, instead of using uh, offset times J plus Y start, I'm also going to subtract from this my Y offset. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> pardon me. And I need to do that for my dot too. Minus y offset. And it seems weird to do minus even though it's above. But that's because when you're measuring pixels in displays, zero, zero is in the upper left. And then I have to do one more in refilling the board. So... I'm going to say y position plus y start minus y offset. Okay, so I'm going to save this now and let's hit play. Now if I were to put in this offset without increasing the size of my room, I'd be creating it outside of the room, um, which would make it not actually be created. Or at least that's what I think happened when I tried to do this on my own before. Oh, okay. I did something wrong. Uh, let's find out. Okay, uh, welcome back. So I made a couple of mistakes here. So the first thing is uh, right now when these are being created, for some reason they're not recognizing what their column is, even though they should have the correct column based on these calculations. So something must be happening with the column calculations with an order of operations thing. So an easy way to fix it is just to outright set the column in row before we do anything else. So in the game manager, in the create event, um, right after we create the dot var dot equals instance create layer, all that stuff, I'm going to add two little rows here. First I'm going to say dot dot column equals i and dot dot row equals j. So that's going to create them in the right place. So if I save this and hit play, um, I'll speed this up. Okay, so now the pieces slid in just like they're supposed to. The problem now though is if I make a match there's no pieces, but there really are. It's just the pieces are being created way the heck up there. So um, we're going to go back to our game manager uh, in our refill board event. I put the minus Y offset in the wrong spot. It's right here on line six. So I'm gonna delete this minus Y offset bit. And what I really wanted to do was I wanted to add it here uh, when we're creating the new dot. Oh, yeah, yeah, and this is something else that I did off camera that I'll show you really quickly. So instance create layer, X position, Y position. I want this to be Y position minus Y offset. Um, and then I want to store this as a miniature variable. So var dot equals um, or local variable is what that's called, not mini variable. I shall call you mini variable and then do the same thing to this dot dot column equals i and dot dot row equals j. Uh, okay, so 
I'm not changing the Y position. I still want the Y position because otherwise it's going to be looking for dots that are way the heck up here when it should be looking for dots that are way the heck down here. Um, so, yeah. So I'm leaving my Y position the same. I'm saying my dot is equal to instance create layer X position, Y position minus Y offset. And then I'm automatically setting the column in the row. So I'm gonna save this, uh, I'm gonna hit play. And I'll fast forward until it's there. Okay, so pieces have fallen. I'm going to make a match. New pieces fall in as well. Make a match. New pieces fall in. So, okay, and this is not really a big gameplay thing. This is just kind of a, a nice little effect that we can add to make it a little more lifelike. Uh, I realize it's not exactly the same way that Candy Crush does stuff, um, but I, I think it's close enough that I think it looks pretty good. Um, now, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be going back into kind of um, the guts of the program, and I'm going to show you a way that we can refactor, which is kind of reorient our code, so that rather than requiring the program to look for specific instances, a specific number of pixels away from each of the dots, we can instead um, look for things that are inside of a what's called a data structure. The way that GameMaker does two-dimensional arrays is a little weird, so we're going to we're going to jump right into it um, using something called a, a data structure grid. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Um, after that, we're going to reskin, and we're going to have some blank spots or jelly tiles or what are those icing tiles? I think they are like meringue or whatever they are. We're going to have some specialty tiles. Um, we're going to do power ups. We're, we're going to go pretty whole hog into this. So. Yeah, stick around. I'm going to be posting more regularly to this. I know it's been quite some time. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the uh, description or down below in the comments. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post a new video. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I also have a Discord server where you can find me chatting pretty much every day. So have yourselves a wonderful day.